Hello everyone, um, welcome to today's video. My name is Anna, I am based in Seattle, Washington, and today I'm going to be talking about my, my August knits and plans for September. So I'm going to talk you through some things that I finished, some things that I'm working on, some things that I acquired, and what is up next on my docket? What is getting me excited for fall because it's fall here in Seattle. Um, I had to turn my heater on this morning when I woke up because it was like 60 degrees in my bedroom. So fall is here. It is sunny, although it did rain yesterday, but we've had a really sunny summer. It hasn't rained a whole lot. So um, sad to see the light go, but excited for cozy fall weather and the opportunity to wear more sweaters. So um, we will start with finished objects and my first finished object, my pride and joy, is my coming soon sweater by Paula M. Paula M. Strict on Instagram and Ravelry. Um, I will rank, link my Ravelry project page for this down below as well as a link to the pattern um, and the designer's Instagram. But here she is. I'm so happy with how it came out. I'll show you a little close up. Um, I picked this pattern because I really liked the sorry, wide raglan band and the um, decreases on the sleeve also have kind of an interesting pattern to them. Um, but I'm really happy with how this turned out. I knitted it with one strand of mohair from African Expressions. I think it's the colorway 6057. Um, it's kind of like a cool gray. And then this purpley lilac yarn is a yarn that I got. I took apart a sweater that I got from Goodwill, but the sweater was hand knit. I could tell because um, it was like bound off with an I cord and I don't, I've never seen a commercial sweater bound off with an I cord. Um, so it is a commercial yarn. I don't know what commercial yarn it is. Um, but the yarn itself is like a DK kind of worsted weight and I knit, so I ended up, I knit, I've knit this like one and a half times now. I knit almost all the way to where you separate for the sleeves with the mohair and the original DK kind of worsted weight yarn and realized I was going to run out of yarn. So I decided to unply the yarn and just use one ply with the mohair. So it was like a fingering very light fingering, almost lace weight with the mohair. And this is the fabric I got. I really like it because it's super warm, but it's not very heavy. Like, I mean, obviously you can see right through it. Um, it's a very light and drapey fabric um, and it just hangs really nicely. I wore it yesterday. I finished it on Monday and I wore it yesterday. Today's Wednesday. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out there. I did make a couple modifications. So when I first started, I thought that my, I don't, I don't like to gauge swatch. I really don't. I especially did not want to gauge swatch this because it's half fisherman's rib and I don't know how to knit it flat and I didn't want to figure it out. I tried and it was just making me angry. So I thought that my gauge was going to be too small. So I knit the second size. I thought that my gauge was going to be too small. So I was going to knit the third size. So I cast on for the third size at the neck, which is only about eight stitches bigger than the second size. And then quickly realized that I was going to be fine. So I ended up knitting it to the second size and I probably could have knit the first size because as you can tell, the raglan increase is really long. It's very drop shoulder on me. Like the separation for sleeves is about, it's like not too far. It's probably like three or four inches above my natural waist. So like, a good five inches below my armpit, which is fine. It just means that when I lift my arm up in the sweater that the body raises up um, and it won't be the most, the easiest to fit underneath a coat in the winter time. But it will be a really good layering piece. Like I think if you wore just like a, a plain um, long sleeve shirt under this, it will be really nice for fall because it's warm, but it's not heavy. Um, and even though you can kind of see through the fabric, it's not, it doesn't look um, sheer because the mohair fills all the gaps. Um, other modifications that I made, um, I ended the raglan increase a little bit early for my size just because it was already getting pretty long. Um, and then on the sleeves, I 
did the number of decreases and then there's like a de you do the decrease is the second of this pattern repeat and then knit a few more rounds and I just ended after the last increase or decrease so I ended and then immediately started the cuff um, because my row gauge on this was a little bit long so it ended up being a bit bigger um, and I was worried that it was going to grow in the wash and just become like overwhelmingly too large so before I blocked this um, the sleeves kind of came to like bracelet length and now they're full length a little bit long and because I was worried about the sleeves being too long and too loose I decided to knit the cuff double so it's double length and then I put elastic in here to hold it on my wrist um, and I'm glad I did that it works really well it's not too super long but I think it just fits a little bit more nicely and if I need to roll my sleeves up I can and they'll stay um, so I'm really happy with that. I really like the twisted rib with the fisherman's rib. It's really cute. But yeah, I knitted it double long and then just sewed it down. I also did that with the collar, um, but that's written into the pattern. And then it's twisted rib on the bottom with an Italian bind off, which took me like an hour <laughs> to bind this off because it's like 250 stitches or something. This took me a very long time to knit. It was on 3.5 millimeter needles and it took me like... A month and a half which doesn't seem like that long but it is kind of a long time like I finished the second sleeve like it took me a full week just to knit the body each sleeve took about a week like it, it was long and there was a while there but like this was starting to hurt my hands and wrists really bad so I had to put it down for a while and not work on it um, but I'm very happy with it it turned out really cute um, it just looks very professional like this is probably the most like, it just looks like you could buy this from a store. I'm really happy with the finish. It turned out beautiful. I don't know what else to say about it besides I love it very much. And the pattern was very well written. Um, I would definitely check out other patterns from this designer because I really liked the explanation she gave. There was lots of technique explanations and everything. So that was great, the coming soon pattern. Um, I have a couple more finished objects. So in my last video, I talked about wanting to knit a beanie or not a beanie what's it called a beret because I don't know why it just struck me so um I did this is the Colette pattern I don't remember the designer it's a free pattern on Ravelry I will link it down below um, and I just made it in this black yarn that I had in my stash it's a merino acrylic blend that I just got for free from um, a lady that I know and I don't know how to wear it to make it cute. I'm just not sure that I can make it cute. I don't know. I just feel like it's very hard to, to make this cute. I don't, I don't know about it. I just don't, I don't know how to wear this really. So yeah, I made it. I don't know if I will ever wear it. I may end up frogging it, but it's really cute. And I like the little eye cord tassel and it was really quick I knitted it in like a day um my other finished object was more like a half finished object <laughs> is something that I had also talked about before it's this mitten this is the I don't remember the name of the pattern um but it is also a free pattern on Ravelry I really like the pattern it was really fun to knit this it's and it's because it's stranded color work the inside is super warm and I knitted this with wool and alpaca so it's very warm the only problem is that is a little bit too small for me I can fit my hand in there but it is snug like my fingers are at the very tippity top of this and the thumb I think the thumb placement is just a little off like it, it should be a little bit lower or I think I didn't swatch for this either. That might be the problem. Could be that my floats are too tight. I mean, it's really, really cute. I love the way it looks, but it does not fit me. So I'm trying to decide if I'm going to knit another one of these and give them away. I just don't know who I would give them to because this would probably be really good. I have pretty small hands. Um, so this would probably be good for like a child, like a 10 to 12 year old and I don't know any 10 to 12 year old children that I want to give this to so I think I might just let it sit for now I'm not gonna knit the other one anytime soon but it's really cute I, I could knit it again 
I think I would go up a needle size. This is knit on a 2.5 millimeter. I think it would fit me better if I went up to a 2.75 or even a three millimeter needle because I think I knit tight with the color work. So really, really cute. I'm very happy with it. Just does not fit. And I knitted this really fast. It was really fun to knit because the pattern is interesting. Um, there's only like two rounds where you have to do three color color work. Most of the time it's two. Um, and I just really like it. I like the Selby Knitten mitten style. It's very cute. And I do want to have mittens for when it gets cold and I'm riding my bike. But this is not it. So this is just going to live in my basket in my stash until I decide what to do with it. It's just so pretty and I spent so much time on it that I don't really want to rip it out, but I also don't really want to spend the time to make the other one if I can't wear it and don't have anyone to give it to. So I don't know about that. Um, my last finished object is a pair of socks. I knit these cuties. I think I showed them to you in the last video as a work in progress and I was like mostly done with the first sock. Um, I think I finished the first sock like that day or maybe the next day after filming that video. This is actually the first sock. And then I've knit up the second one and blocked them and I was actually wearing them most of the day today, which is why they're like a funky shape. Um, I like this pattern, it's called Soper and I do not remember the designer, but it's free on Ravelry. Um, this is my second pair of socks I've knit. I knit these on a 2.25 millimeter needle, which is great. The last pair I did was on a 275, which was too big. They're just way too loose on my feet. And I also knit them in alpaca, so they're a little bit soft. They're like house socks. Um, and I like these. I think I did not go down a needle size on the ribbing. And I think that would have been good for me because you can kind of see they're a little bit stretched out. Like the foot or the leg part is a little bit big for me, which is kind of strange because I thought maybe the foot part would be big, but the foot part fits really well. Um, and the length is good, but the leg is a little bit big. So I think a tighter rib would help kind of counteract that and hold it tighter to my leg. But they're really cute. They're comfortable. They fit close enough that I will I can wear them inside of shoes. Um, I have a slip stitch heel, so I would even wear them inside of my like Doc Martin Chelsea boots that I wear all the time in the rainier months. Um, yeah, and then this is knit on a, uh, I think last time I said it was a merino angora nylon mix i got that mixed up with a different yarn i have in my stash this is a merino silk mix um i think it's like 80 20 something like that but um the contrast color this kind of like pinky color is i naturally dyed with blackberries that i picked from my backyard blackberry bramble bush so these are really fun and special um you can kind of tell on this one I ran out of the contrast color like here so I had to dye up some more with some more blackberries and they are a little different in color I don't know if it's gonna pick up on the camera maybe right there you can see this is a little bit brighter of a pink this is a little bit more purple um, but it's not noticeable enough that I care I knew that they weren't gonna match when I had to do another dye lot and it's fine. Like you can kind of tell right there, they're a little different, but that's the part that's in my foot or in my shoe anyway. So yeah, I'm really happy with these, how they turned out and they're super comfy. And now I want to make more socks because they're really good just for like taking on the go with you. Um, yeah, so that's my last finished object, the Soper socks. Um, next I will talk you through my works in progress, um, which I have in a little basket here. So, um, I will start with the one I cast on the longest ago. This is my first ranunculus. Um, I did a big yarn order, which I will talk about in a minute because I needed to get some yarn for a sweater I'm working on for my sister. And this really pretty kind of burgundy silk merino was on a really good sale, so I bought it. And I didn't know what I was gonna do with it, but then I think like that night or the night after I ordered it, I thought that would be perfect for a ranunculus. So I have started my first ranunculus. Um, if you don't know what this is, it's a very, 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 very popular pattern. 
um, that has like over 10,000 projects on Ravelry. Everybody loves it because it's easy and fast and doesn't use a whole lot of yarn. You knit it on big needles, so it's very popular. Um, and I've liked it so far. I have done uh, the whole yoke pattern, the whole like yoke lace. You can kind of see it there. There's some like kind of cableies and some eyelets, like lace. Um, it was really fun to do the yoke. The only thing is that I went down a needle size, so the pattern is paid for, but I will tell you that it's knit on six millimeter needles, and I went down to a five because I didn't want the fabric to be quite so sheer. I mean, it's pretty sheer already, but I just thought if I did it on a six millimeter, it would be like even more sheer. And I wanted it to be like a fabric and not a mesh. So I've done the whole yoke and I think in the pattern, you only do a few raglan increases after that. I'm having to do quite a few more to make it fit. Um, but I really love the color. This yarn is really, really nice. Um, feels really good. It feels, it's really easy to knit with. Um, so yeah, I just have to do some more raglan increases on this probably, I don't know, a few more rounds and then I will divide for the body and the sleeves and then it's just stuck in it from there on out. Um, but it's very cute. You cannot see a thing. There we go. I get why people like it. Um, and I'm excited to see how it turns out. Uh, yeah. So that I will hope, I'm hoping to have that done for September. No, it is September before October. So like in the next few weeks, I am going on a trip. I leave tomorrow and I'm taking this with me to work on. Um, which would be good because it's pretty easy, mostly stockinette. And then I have two projects that I just cast on today. Mm, I cast one on today, I cast one on yesterday, two days ago. Um, so this first one is the sweater that I'm making for my sister. This is sweater number five by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Um, my little sister sent me a picture of this sweater on Instagram she saw and I saw the picture and immediately knew what the pattern was. Um, it was a boutique that had ripped off this pattern and made sweaters out of it and sold them or it was a drop shipper or something, but it was this pattern like identical. So, um, I knew I could make it for her pretty easily. I knew exactly what pattern to buy. Um, and so I just needed to get some yarn for it. Um, this is knit, I'm knitting it on nine millimeter needles. The, um, ribbing is on six and beyond that I will keep it to myself because it's paid for pattern, but this is in a lovely half fisherman's rib kind of style. Um, and it's the traditional way of knit one, purl one, knit one below. Um, and I started this only on Monday night. I had done the ribbing and the, just the ribbing. And then yesterday I did all the short row shaping. So it was like, kind of like this. And then just today I've done the front piece and a good chunk of the back piece. I'm hoping to have the back piece done by the end of tonight and join for the body because I'm not taking this with me when I go out of town just because it's so big and chunky and requires a lot of yarn that I don't want to take with me. Um, but if I wasn't, if I was going to keep knitting on this at home, I could finish this in a couple of days and it's up super fast. Like this is probably two, three hours of knitting, like really easy, quick. And I'm like a good chunk of the way down the body. So I like the pattern. It's very well written, very easy to follow. There are some comments on the Ravelry page about difficulties with the short rows. Um, but I actually didn't find them too hard. I mean, it's a little bit finicky at the beginning to get the pattern right. It's kind of weird to go back and forth in half fisherman's rib. Um, but once you figure it out, it goes really easily. I don't think this is a beginner pattern. I think this is like a in high intermediate to advanced, um, just for the short row shaping. But other than that, it's been really easy. Um, I really like the shoulder detail and the shoulder shaping. It's just going to be really cute when it's done, super chunky and warm. And yeah, it's fun to knit. It's kind of hurting my hand a little bit. The small, whatever I was knitting, that, my purple sweater was hurting this hand. This is hurting this hand. I've just, I never had hand and wrist pain really until like two months ago from knitting. And now I'm really feeling it and my like wrists are all crickety crackety. <laughs> so I feel like an old lady and I, it, but I'm not really good at not knitting. I just love to be knitting. So I do have to force myself to take some breaks um, and mix it up and knit on different things. So that is the sweater number five. Very cute. We'll 
Um, I'm knitting it with uh, two strands of like worsted weight yarn held double. I will talk about the yarn in a second. Um, yeah, so there she is. Very happy with it. Um, and it's going fast. And then my last thing I'm going to knit is a little pair of socks. I just cast these on like two hours ago. Um, and I'm going to try toe up socks this time. I've never done toe up socks before. Um, so I wanted to try it, especially because I really hate Kitchener stitch, which I realized when I was making those socks and you don't have to Kitchener with toe up. So I'm going to do these. I'm not really using any particular pattern. Um, if like me, you have we watch a lot of knitting videos. You've probably been served ads for the Bellish app, which is like a pattern generator. And so I made a pattern on there because it's free and I wanted to see what the hype was about. And I was looking for a toe up sock with a short row heel. Those are two new techniques that I wanted to learn. Um, and I could not find the right pattern on Ravelry. So I, well, for free, I don't love paying for sock patterns, maybe one day, but right now don't want to. So I did it on Bellish and I will tell you how I feel like it is when I finish the first sock. I'll tell you what I think of the pattern, but so far so good. Um, and I'm going to knit the toes in this kind of yellow color. Um, and then the body, well, not the body, like the main color of the sock is this yarn that I showed you last time that I dyed. Kind of like a watercolory blue with some yellow speckles and i divided the skein in half so that i will go toe up and then just knit until i run out of yarn each of these is about 17 grams which might not seem like very much but those soper socks that i made weigh 21 grams each so if i do 17 grams for this and toes heels and cuffs with the yellow that should get me to 21 grams and I'll be a good sock. But part of the reason I'm doing toe up is because I'm just gonna knit until I run out of my main color. Um, because I dyed it and I don't want to dye anymore. So that is the plan for these. Next, I will show you things that I purchased. So like I said, I made one yarn order a couple weeks ago. And I ordered from Ice Yarns, which is a Turkish yarn company. Um, and I was kind of humming and hawing about whether to order it because getting it shipped all the way from Turkey is kind of like not that sustainable, but it is incredibly affordable. And I wanted to try it. I've been wanting to try it for a while, ever since I found out of it about it like a couple months ago. Um, so I decided to try it and I spent a very long time on the website looking through like their entire sale section because it's already really affordable and then they have stuff on sale and I found some gems. So like I was talking about before, this fabric or this yarn that I'm knitting my ranunculus in is this silk merino, this burgundy color. And this I'm holding it double. It's like basically a lace weight yarn. It's very thin. Um, so I'm holding it double, but they do have it in a DK weight as well. And I think this was a like two to 250 a skein. The thing about ice yarns is you have to buy packs of yarn. You can't really buy single skeins. So I got six of these 25 gram balls for $10, I think. So it was very well priced and it's really nice quality. I was a little concerned about the quality of the yarn for a price point that low, which also makes me think that there might be some manufacturing concerns I should be worried about. So take that with a grain of salt. Um, but it's a really, really soft. It will be very nice next to skin. I think it will be warm and lightweight. So I'm excited about that. I'm gonna use all 150 grams, I think, in this ranunculus. Um, this is my first 50 gram ball that I feel like I'm probably like two thirds of the way through and I'm gonna use that for the yoke and then my plan is to use like another 50 grams for the body and 50 grams for the sleeves. So that's how I'm budgeting my yarn. That's all I have, so it has to work. But yeah, I really like this. They have quite a few colors in this silk merino. Very happy with this. I really like it and I like the fabric that it's making. I'll show you one more time. It's very sheer, but it's really lovely. The next yarn that I bought was for my sister's sweater. Um, and is this 100% wool, um, 
worsted weight yarn. Now I know this does not look worsted. It looks like a DK or even a sport, but when it is washed, it like doubles in size. There is a lot of spinning oil in this yarn as it comes and it smells like a barnyard. Like this is very sheepy. There is a lot of lanolin in here. You can feel the spinning oil like when you're knitting with it, but it blooms up beautifully. It gets super lofty and soft. It's like one of the softest 100% wool, non-superwash, non-merinos that I have felt. Um, it's really nice. I like this a lot and I'm holding it actually double with a 100% wool that I already had in my stash because I wasn't sure that I was gonna have enough of this to hold it double and when I held it single, it was a little bit too thin. Even though the yarn is similar in gauge to the one on the pattern, it didn't look right. So, happy with this. Um, that's the one thing I will say about the pattern, the sweater number five pattern is that it gives two different yarn weights. One is like a worsted and one is a bulky, but it never says that if you're using the worsted, you should hold it double. But I think that that is what would work best. So that's a little bit confusing. And I wish I had just bought a bulky yarn, but it's turning out really nice. And the yarns are similar enough. They're both 100% wool. They're both natural color that it's gonna, it looks fine. Um, and because they're both 100% wool, the two strands will kind of grip to each other once all the spinning oil is washed out and it will look like one strand. Um, but I really like this yarn. It is a sale yarn. I think it doesn't have like a name or a unique code. I, I think it may have just been like a, um, like dead stock almost, like just the end of a, of a spool that they didn't end up dying or something. Um, so I don't know if they still have it, but if they do, I will link it for you. It smells so sheepy and I kind of love it actually. Like that's how you know that this is very minimally processed or that's basically just carded and spun. Um, so this would be really fun to dye on, but it's not for me, it is for Julia. So I'm really happy with this yarn. And then I got two other yarns, which I will, did I get two other ones? Two other ones that I will put um, a picture in or a video of me talking about here. One of them is a Merino cotton blend. I think it's 65% Merino, 35% cotton, maybe the other way around. Um, and it is 500 grams. It is also in the sale section and it was just like a bulk, like massive hank, 500 grams of this Merino cotton. I do not have a plan for that yarn, but I'm thinking I will either knit a sweater or a shawl with it because it's been getting cold and I'm cold in my house and I have this really big scarf that I like wrap around myself. That's kind of like a blanket, but not. And so it's kind of convinced me that I think I need to give shawls a try. So I'm trying to figure out what yarn I want to use for making a shawl. I don't have a pattern chosen yet, but I have a few in mind and that yarn could work because I have so much of it, but it's also a sweater's quantity. So it's white as you will see in the video. Um, and it's really soft and really nice. Um, the other one I got is like a 40 ish percent alpaca, 40% mohair, like 17% nylon and 3% elastane yarn, which came in a 300 gram hank. And um, I bought because I really like mohair and alpaca. I wish it was 100% or like 80, but 80, 20 is about as much as I will go, like 80% natural fiber, 20% artificial. The mohair that I used for my coming soon sweater is 80% mohair, 20% polyamide. So I prefer natural fibers, but mohair and alpaca 80% blend with some artificial is really good. And it was a really good deal. I think that 10, that 300 gram skein was like $10. Um, I know that I bought the three things for myself. One of them was 10, the other one was 10 and the other one was eight. I don't remember which one was which. I will link it all down below for you. Um, but yes, I bought that. I wanna see if I can dye it, the mohair. I have actually a little test strand of it in a dye concentrate in the kitchen and I'm gonna go pull it out after this and see if it worked. I think because the elastane is in there, it might not work, but if not, I will use it in a sweater or a blanket or something. I just really like to, I like the feeling of alpaca and mohair. They're so soft and lovely, 
but they're very expensive. So that more affordable option popped up and I bought it because I can use it in all sorts of projects. 300 grams of mohair and alpaca, I feel like is gonna take me very far. Um, I used 150 grams for reference in the sweater. I had six balls and I used every last drop of it in the purple sweater. Um, so like I ran out as I was doing the Italian bind off. So I'm very glad that I had six and not four. I thought I, I didn't think I was gonna need it all, but I did. Um, so if I have an, knit another sweater where I need 150 grams of mohair or alpaca mix, then I could get two sweaters out of it basically. Um, or if I wanted to do a sweater that was 100% that fluffier yarn, I have that option. So that's a lot. Um, and I just figured it would go a long way and I would use it. So that is my acquisitions. That's all I bought because I have lots of yarn and I'm trying not to <laughs> expand my selection too much. Um, I need to use what I have, obviously. So that is it. And I think that's it. Oh, things I want to make. So I have started using Ravelry a lot more to not just to find patterns, but to track my progress and set up my queue. I also have like 600 patterns favorited on there just because I, I basically use it like a Pinterest board where I like favorite everything that inspires me or that I'm interested in potentially making one day. And then if I'm looking for a pattern for like a specific yarn or I wanna make a sweater, I will go through my curated bundle and see like which of the patterns that I've saved speaks to me. So yeah, I treat it kind of like a Pinterest board. But I've also been using the Q feature to kind of make an even more curated selection of patterns that I really wanna make coming soon. So um, at the top of my queue is the little sweater for my niece. I'm trying to decide what yarn I wanna use for her. I was thinking I would use an 100% wool, but I think she it's gonna to be too scratchy for her, so I need to find something in my stash that's a little bit less scratchy. I do have a wool that's uh, a little less scratchy that could work, or I have some cashmere, but I don't know. I'm a little sensitive about giving a two-year-old cashmere. I feel like she might mess it up. Just by nature of being a child. Um, so I need to make that for her. I have some mittens on my queue because like I said, I need mittens for when I'm riding my bike. Um, I'll show them to you. They're these broken rib mittens, free pattern. Um, I found this other pattern that I wanna make, the Autumn Dream Sweater by Emma Dew. And I want to use the green wool mohair yarn that I bought last month and showed you in last year's video, or last the last video. Um, that is like a vintage yarn. It's from Penguin Fibers. Um, but this pattern is really pretty. I will pop a picture of it for you. It's got like a little bit of lace work, kind of like ferns almost, or leaves on the yoke with some bobbles. I'm undecided on whether or not I'm going to do the bobbles. And then it's just very simple all the way down and has the same motif on the cuffs. So it's really pretty. It's a free pattern. Um, I'm excited to make it. And then I want to make myself a cardigan with the Patton's merino that I bought in the last video as well. Um, it's just kind of like a neutral camel color and I wanna make myself just a cardigan that will go with all sorts of things for the winter time. Um, I wanna make a shawl, which I told you already. I really like the Fleur shawl by Estra Espas Trico. It's a garter shawl, but it has bobbles on it. Bobbles just take forever, so I'm undecided on that. And then, yeah, I have a couple more patterns in my queue, but those are the ones that I'm like excited to make soon. So the only problem is that I'm starting back to school in like three weeks and working part-time and taking 18 hours of classes. And I just don't think I'm going to have a whole lot of time for knitting, especially because I can't really knit in class anymore because I'm going in person, which is exciting. I'm very excited to be going back to class in person, but I did get a lot of knitting in during the zoom era of school. So, I may knit some socks in class <laughs> and just kind of hold it under the table or maybe I'll just be unabashed about it. As long as the teacher doesn't care, we'll see. Um, but yeah, I think my knitting time is going to be drastically reduced. So I should probably start focusing on Christmas presents and less on things for me. Um, I want to make some DK weight socks for my dad. I know for Christmas, maybe some other people. Um, and then I need to make sweaters for my niece. That sweater for my niece. I want to make a sweater or like a, a onesie or something for my other niece. So I have a lot to do. I have a lot to do. 
So I'm going to cut the gabbing and get back to knitting so that I can do the things I have to do. Um, thank you guys for watching my video today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, you can follow me, subscribe here. You can follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is Anna Passy Trevino. It's not like a knitting specific Instagram, but I do post a lot of my knitting on there. Um, so yeah, that is all for me. I hope you guys have a lovely September that you enjoy like a little pumpkin spice latte or some fall vibes and I will see you in October. Bye.